我是我跟我拉住了，然后我把跟我拉我的那个链接给了雪丹，雪丹就可以。我能看，我只能看。你要干啥？你让我在我电话直播是吗？你看，我只能看。我不知道我直播的话，那我得。他是开电脑，他相当于是你自己看我。他现在要先，他他在他在吗？对。嗯。
。二选一，嗯，我试试看，试看能不能过，因为他那个。
Good morning or good evening. Uh, hi, hi, Stefano. Hi. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, We're waiting for the speaker. Uh, it's, uh, uh, yeah. uh, there are four experts are waiting. Four speakers need to come in. Yes. 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 Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, Um, I will I will start to recording now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can share this. Okay. Okay. Yes, it's okay. There is some someone missing here. Uh, why? Nothing. Why? Hmm? One, two, three, four, five, six. Why? Why? I don't know. Is is it is it it looks good okay for me? Yeah, but you see this this the last speaker. Yeah, it's not shown. Okay, sorry. No, it's it's not work. I don't know why. This was prepared by Jane. Ah, you have, okay, I understand. Okay, I, I, I work on it, just a moment. Okay, I'll work on it. No, it's not working. I don't know why. I don't know why it's not working.
Ah, I understand. Okay. And that's all. And Yes. And uh, Jane is on 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 her home because she fell. Uh, and uh, she will and she will come later. Okay. Okay. Um. Now I now will the... let. You... Let the speakers come in. Okay. Hi, Anastasia. How Hi. are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, we were we were testing. Okay. The presentation. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. okay, Lisa is coming as well. Good morning, Lisa. Hi there, yes, can you hear me okay? We can hear you. Good, I can hear you and I can see you both. Okay, that's good. Thank you, Lisa. Hi there, Anastasia. <laughs> Do you know how many have registered, Stefano? Uh, not so many, but uh, uh, they stream the video Ooh. on a Chinese uh, platform. And oh, last okay. time, last time we have we have we had two thousand six hundred views. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> so Chinese people were very much interested oh, good. <laughs> i suppose <laughs> that's that's not bad uh, lisa if you want you can uh, uh, share your presentation and you can check if the presentation is working i yes, hope I that the the, the the button for sharing the video is enabled. I don't know. Mine is it enabled. Is, yeah. uh, mine is. My worry is I can't see what I need to share. So I'm just going to put myself on mute and click a bit more. Yeah, on it's always see, a see problem if you have a lot of stuff on the desktop. <laughs> uh, yes. We start at 10? We start at uh, 2 o'clock. Well, 10 for me, sorry. And for about you. Uh, because last time we waited uh, 10 minutes, but it's not good because uh, otherwise the webinar is prolonged too much and it's not good. So we start yeah. sharp and then we see. I will introduce uh, myself and you, Anastasia. Then I will present 
uh, introduce the first two speakers and then you will do with the last two speakers. And then uh, uh, if there are some questions uh, coming from the chat, we can take note of them. Otherwise we, we, we find some question and we split, I, we, I mean, we share the discussion, okay? Yes, that's okay. I'll have to leave it uh, uh, at exactly the finish time because I've got another webinar starting, uh, a me meeting. Sorry, not webinar, meeting. Okay. We, we, we will try to do that. Sorry. No, no. Uh, you are they right. just happen to book book it the same day. Yeah. Mm -mm. So Lisa disappeared. Oops. I might come back if that's all right. I'm still here, but I might just switch off my screen. Yeah, okay. 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 Okay, can you see that now? Sorry. We we can see we can see your screen. Yeah. Perfect. The problem was because of all this remote working, I haven't set Zoom up to be able to access files, you know, to share files and rarely been in the office and use Zoom mm -hmm. for shared meetings. So I had to go out and set the change the settings. So hopefully if I just check presentation mode. Okay. Okay, can you see that tool size now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay. You you can you can scroll if you want, yeah. But it seems working. Yeah. yeah. It seems it's holding now, isn't it? Good. Okay, that's good. Okay. And that's one, uh, one challenge. Yeah. Yeah, it, the, the presentation is working. So you will be the first speaker. Okay. And uh, okay, we can, you. okay, we can now check the presentation from Shariful. Shariful, can you, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, good evening. <laughs> good evening. Yes. Okay. Good evening. Because you are in Australia as well. Australia. Yeah. Okay. So if you want, you can share the screen, and we can mm -hmm. check the presentation. Oh, perfect. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that, that's fine. Yeah. I'll Perfect. Stop sharing. Okay. So the sequence will be uh, uh, Lisa will be the first, mm -hmm. then uh, uh, Nadia from Nadia come from Canada will be the second. You, Shariful, will be the third, and the last will be Philip from uh, Switzerland. So we can uh, keep yeah. the presentation from Nadia and Shariful, which are uh, related because the first is um, related to hypertension, and your presentation, Shariful, is uh, related to cardiovascular disease. They are closed, mm -hmm. and it's much better. Okay. We will start at two o'clock sharp. So I hope Nadia and Philippe will connect soon. So we can check also their presentations.
Oh, okay. Here is Nadia. Hi, Nadia. How are you? Good, good. I know I'm not coming on for a while. Um, I just want to test everything before I, before I come yeah. on. If you want to share your screen and check the presentation, for us it's fine. If you can hear me, everything is fine. For yeah, me. yeah. We can hear you and see you. Okay. All good? Okay, good. Okay, good. Thanks. Very good. You will be the second speaker, not okay. the last one, because we okay. moved the Lisa on top, but we kept the se the original sequence for the other speakers. Okay. Sure. Sure. No problem. Okay. I will uh, come back on in a few minutes, it, unless there's anything you else you need me to know. No, we will start uh, two o'clock sharp. Okay. So we can stay in in, in time and finish at uh, three o'clock my time. Okay, thanks. Thank you.我刚刚试过了视频号和那个右侧不只能二选一然后这边停的二选一对因为推流我这样接你们不是已经用过了吗我这边停的二选一还是还是我出去我出去我就删一个还是停的那个你要帮我再再记一下是吧在那个我就我
digital health <coughs> digital health refers to a range of technologies that can be used to treat patients and share collect and collect and share health information including এখানে রাখতে হবে বিজ্ঞানের ডিজিটাল হেলথ রেফার্স টু এ রেঞ্জ অফ টেকনোলজিস ক্যান বি ইউজড ডিজিটাল হেলথ digital health uh, refers to a range of technology that can be used to treat patients collect share health information includes হ্যালো আলেক্স আলেক্স হ্যালো হাই 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 আলেক্স আই থিঙ্ক ইউ নিড টু টক উইথ অ্যাবি 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 অর জেইন Yes, Jane. Have no, here. Jane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, Jane. Uh, uh, Dr. Miske is here to help you to uh, allow streaming of the webinar on the working group socials. So if you can talk with him. And... Hello. Yes. Thank you, Stefano. Stefano, I'm sorry, the webinar is starting right now? It's uh, starting at two o'clock. Two o'clock, okay. Can you make it? Um, I, I, I am la I'm available just for, for five minutes now. I hoping to tell um, the IT staff how to do it, but then uh, I think I will reconnect to attend it later. I have to go to the hospital. Okay, so... Uh, Uh, talk to Jane or write to her in the chat. Okay. Yes. Jane, hi. Jane, can yeah. you please send me your email? I will send you the instructions right now. Can, can you send okay. me an email uh, or uh, uh, I will write you down my email on the chat. Please send me your email. You will have, there are three steps, uh, simple steps to, to, to put in into the... Um, broadcasting of the webinar yes so i i uh what i should write in my email i'm sorry uh, just to have i i need your email because i cannot uh, give you all the details here i think there's a lot of people and you will start the webinar um i will, I will send you right now the details uh, as soon as possible Okay, I have sent you my email. Okay, perfect. So I will send you an email in one minute. 
Stefano, it's okay. I will send an email. Now, I hope we will. Um, uh, we can manage it. Uh, I have to do like two or three minutes from my side some settings. Um, but I hope uh, it's restream. I hope we can uh, we can do it. You okay, are get, no, it's get in touch with Jane, and we will start the webinar in a couple of minutes. Perfect. Okay. I will have my my sound on. My camera is switched off, so I will I will uh, talk by email, and then if not, um, Jane will message me here. Okay. 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 Thank you, Alex. Thanks. Thanks. Good webinar to all of you. Hi, Anastasia. Thank you. Hi, Alex. Everybody, I'm sorry. I don't know a lot of people here. Have a good, great Thank webinar. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Jane, did you already did you already start the streaming on your platforms? Yes. I mean, the social, so we can start uh, uh, whenever you we want. Okay. So because okay. it's two o'clock here now, so we maybe we can start. Yes. It's okay. Okay. I will start. Okay. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, this webinar will deal with the role of digital health and telemedicine during the COVID-19. And specifically, we will uh, deal with the applications for the management of specific diseases or conditions. I am Professor Umboni, and I am the chair of this uh, webinar, together with Dr. Anastasia Mihailidou from Australia. Uh, we have uh, experts telling us uh, uh, the different applications in different conditions. And I would like uh, to start first with uh, Dr. Lisa McCann from United Kingdom. Um, and she will talk about uh, the role of real-time remote monitoring system for patients with cancer. Please, Lisa. Thank you for the introduction. Um, hi, colleagues. Nice to virtually meet, meet you today. So my name is Lisa McCann. I'm based in uh, Glasgow in Scotland, and I'm going to talk about real-time remote monitoring systems for people with cancer. So first of all, a little bit of uh, context around chemotherapy for those of you who may not be familiar. So the symptoms and side effects of chemotherapy can be poorly controlled despite really clear guidance for both patients and professionals on how to manage them. And as a consequence of that poor, poor control or poor management, it may mean that the symptoms are not optimally treated, which can lead to impaired health related quality of life, for example, increased health care issues, and potentially increased mortality of patients. And at the moment, the current norm in terms of chemotherapy symptom reporting is recall and self-report from a patient's perspective for them to report the clinical setting symptoms that they think warrant um, support based on the guidance that they've received. But sometimes the uncertainty around those symptoms, how severe they are, any delays to that reporting might impact in terms of patient safety. And we maybe hear uh, patients say things like, the doctors and nurses told me to expect vomiting, so I didn't report it, so perhaps weren't aware that might have been a more severe 
um, indicator of something that they need to have report reported in some input for. <laughs> So that introduces the concept of real-time reporting and remote monitoring. And that real-time element means that people can report those symptoms as they're happening there and then at that moment. And through the use of remote monitoring technologies like the application I'm going to introduce you to, that can help introduce that timely access to care for patients and may and can mean that they can have the support and intervention as they need them. It can also mean through the use of real-time remote monitoring that people can have their needs appropriately triaged and therefore receive the right care provision. And that means that they can see the right person in the right setting at the right time for the right reason, and therefore helping to uh, streamline that health care, health care, care access and support. It means also that remote monitoring allows people to engage with services regardless of their geographic location because they can access the care and support remotely, digitally, regardless of having to come back and forth into the treatment centre. And in some of the countries we worked with, with large geographic spreads, that's really important. And if you're monitoring these symptoms in real time, it can potentially help to reduce unscheduled care visits and therefore improve patient outcomes and contribute to cost savings within the health services. Some benefits around real time remote monitoring around those patient clinician communication and how it can enhance that and provide that link between people. And therefore, as a consequence, we're improving symptom control, improving patient satisfaction, and patient well-being because they're able to report, engage, get feedback from their clinicians in that real time. And through the use of these digital solutions that are developed in collaboration with both patients and professionals, it means we're creating much more accessible digital solutions that can be completed by most patient groups. We've had uh, patients in their 70s, 80s, 90s using these systems through that collaborative co-design. So as one particular example that I'm going to, to focus on for the, the time I've got today, is called the Advanced Management System, or ASIM as the acronym. And it's a body of work that myself and some colleagues have worked on for a number of years, where we have developed this accessible patient-entered patient, uh, digital solution. And as you can see here, it's very simply based on core symptoms around chemotherapy, where people are asked if they've had it with a yes, no response, and then a couple of additional triage questions. They're asked about the severity of the symptom they've reported and how much it's bothered them. So we're getting that, that triple level of indicator of somebody's experience right there and right then. And we also ask patients to take their temperature each time they complete one of these questionnaires as an early indicator of potential neutropenic acceptance, which is really important in the context of chemotherapy therapy care. So there's this patient element to it where they can take the questionnaires on their app. There's a companion clinician handset which has the response uh, element to it. So as soon as a patient reports or sends one of those reports in, if they have entered symptoms that are problematic, according to our risk algorithm that we've created, they will generate either a red alert or an amber alert into the system. I'm just trying to put this pointer on to help see. So they have this red alert and these amber alerts here. And as soon as the, the alert comes in from the patient, the clinical staff can see that as something that they have to respond to. If they were to click on that one, for example, they can then get an immediate review of what the patient has reported in those previous one to two minutes as it's hit the server and hit the system. So it's really speeding up how they're reporting symptoms. It's taking that decision away from patients, whether the level of symptom they're experiencing is severe enough, and then it's being fed into the clinical setting. And the third component of that is the clinician portal, where the clinicians can log on to this dedicated website area and again see all the symptoms that the patient has reported. They can see graphs of those symptoms. They can see that immediately the alert level, and that red alert is in a the kind of immediate response required in 30 minutes. And they can also see all the demographic information and the clinical summary information of the patient in one place. So everything is centralized here um, so that they can contact the patient as and when they need to to be able to follow that through. There's also information around alert response policies and different um, self-care times, but most recently we've completed a large-scale European randomized controlled trial of the system under a study called eSmart, and that's what I'm just going to spend the last couple of minutes talking to you about. The aims of this particular study were to evaluate the effects of that remote monitoring system, particularly on symptom burden. That was our primary outcome. We also looked at things like supportive care needs, anxiety, self-efficacy, and work limitations. 
It was a multi-centre repeated measure study um, and randomised controlled trials that we worked with five countries across Europe, as you can see here, and 12 cancer centres. So it was a large scale deployment of this technological intervention. The range of uh, primary and secondary outcomes, as indicated, I won't go through all these in detail in the interest of time. I'm going to focus just a couple of headline news, uh, sorry, a couple of headline news from the symptom bird and the main primary outcomes in the next couple of slides. But what we were interested in was observing and um, evaluating the impact of that ASIMS intervention, that whole system of remote monitoring, in terms of reducing symptom burden during chemotherapy treatment. And we compared the intervention group who received that compared to the control group who received standard care. We also had a number of secondary outcomes and some qualitative assessments as well. The work that we've, we've done and what I'm outlining here, you can read more in a couple of papers we've already published. We have a the full protocol in the BMJ open. We've got a paper in JMIR, which is around our early uh, set up and evaluation across the clinical site, and then our full um, results paper in the BMJ that was published last year in 2021. So you can follow these, these through or contact me for more information if you're interested. But just to, to kind of quickly capture some of what we, we found, we recruited 840 patients across our site. We had a couple of people who we had to withdraw um, or who withdrew their consent. So we had 415 people in the intervention arm and 414 in the uh, control arm, which is one of the largest studies, to our knowledge, of a digital health intervention in this cancer context. And um, so we're really pleased to be able to recruit that many people. We were recruiting people during chemotherapy, so most people did four to six chemotherapy cycles. We really want to kind of highlight this aspect about the attrition because it's really important how you we retain so many people in the study over a protracted period of time. So we only had 8.2% attrition in the intervention group and 92 in the control group. And there's a whole load of learning as to what, what we did to help emphasize that and encourage that, what we, we can share at later stage. And we had quite a good balance in our randomization between the different study groups. So just a couple of uh, headline results in relation to the primary outcomes that impact on symptom burden. We were able to demonstrate the effectiveness of our intervention on symptom burden for the intervention group. We demonstrated that the symptom burden remained at pre-chemotherapy treatment level over all six chemotherapy cycles for those people who used the intervention, whereas the control group, the index, psychological symptoms and physical symptoms. And we also observed some positive changes in relation to health-related quality of life through the FACG and through state and trait anxiety as well, some of our secondary outcome measures. Some other aspects I think are relevant in terms of digital health interventions to highlight around the adherence of um, our patients in the group in terms of using interventions that are pretty high at 76.9%, um, which is again a really a strong indicator of people's acceptability of this way of reporting the symptoms. Similarly for the professionals in terms of responding to the alert and in terms of where the alert went, so self-care or managed by acute referral to oncology, but we were able to kind of track that based on the level of alerts that were coming through. 